Chuck. Hey. Welcome back to the, yes. expla- the explainer zone. <laughs> Oh, I like it. <laughs> you like the explainer zone? I think we sh- that should be what we call it now. Ooh, the explainer zone. The explainer zone. It's like the twilight zone, except when you leave, you know what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. The zone, there's like the red zone, the end zone, right. the, the twilight zone. The Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. I we'll, like it. The we'll, explainer we'll, we'll, zone. We'll work on that. So I got one for you. How about acoustic effects? In climactic phenomenon. Really? Yeah, yeah. I, I just thought just thought about that. Okay, it sounds um, like something that if somebody said to me at a cocktail party, I'd be like, I got to get a drink. I'll be right back. <laughs> but they will and, come back because it's intriguing enough, but they got to get they got to prep. Right. But they first they got to get prepped. Get right. chemically prepped for it. <laughs> exactly. All right, you so let's, let's start out with um, thunder and lightning, for example. So... Lightning, in its path between the ground and the clouds, or between a cloud and a cloud, never goes in a straight line because it's finding the path of least resistance the entire time, unknown to you. This is what it's doing. And then when you see the lightning strike, it is already a predetermined path between one point and another. All right. Now, it turns out the sound of lightning is simply the shock wave of rapidly heated air by the bolt of electricity moving through the air, which is extremely hot. Right. Okay, it's thousands of degrees. But what matters is that it is, the air is some other temperature and then it is instantaneously made extremely hot. This creates an expanding shock wave that we hear as thunder. Okay, now because the because the path of the lightning is not straight, there are kinks in the root. So each segment of that kinky lightning has its own generated shockwave, okay? Right. So now you have multiple kinks generating their shockwaves, and you can have constructive and destructive interference of competing shockwaves. That makes so much sense, so, so, which is, oh, go ahead. Keep okay, going. okay. Oh, so, this is good. Okay, so our researcher just found the, the lightning 50,000 degrees 50,000 degrees Fahrenheit? Okay. Yes. yes. Okay, that, that's hot, okay? All right, okay. So, so now watch. So with these different segments, that's why a single lightning bolt, and by the way, the lightning bolt is not all the same distance from you. Okay, the parts that are a little closer that were on the ground, if it's cloud to cloud, the part directly above you is closer than farther away. So the sound will hit you at different times, but it's Love one it. generated event. Right. So, so that's why the lightning can go snap, crackle, pop, okay? That's why it's not just one acoustic experience. It is a, it is a highly I love your thunder. I, okay, you like my we, thunder? We have to isolate uh, no. <laughs> what just happened. You, you, if I see that on a meme, I'm going to come oh, and kick your ass. Oh, my God. I am so... I'm going to kick <laughs> that your ass. That is so going to be a meme. <laughs> <laughs> so, so here's the lightning, and it's because of the acoustical configuration of the lightning bolt itself. That is wonderful. I'm serious. That is so great because... One of my favorite things in the world is to hear lightning, um, to hear thunder, but not the rumbling thunder. The thunder that sounds as if it is tearing the sky. Yeah, because that, it's okay, I'm getting there. That's my next point. Okay. okay. So, so, that, so I'm just simply accounting for, oh, by the way, constructive and destructive interference, if you're not familiar with that. So, so sound travels in waves. Right. So the crests and troughs, and that's this is a pressure wave through the air. It hits your eardrum, your eardrum vibrates. We interpret that as sound. Uh, so does your body, too. By the way, there are certain frequencies of sound that are longer, sorry, there's certain wavelengths of sound that are longer than what will fit in your eardrum. So your eardrum will have a hard time communicating it to your brain, but the length of the wavelength is about the size of your chest cavity. That's the low frequency, long wavelength. And so there are some sounds that you feel more than you hear. 
Oot, 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 oot. That's the rhythm section of the. <laughs> the beat. What do they call the beat? The 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 beat boppers. What what do they call the these? Beat boxers. Yes. B- b- yeah, yeah, yeah. So if, boy, if I heard lightning starting to do that, it was like, whoa! There is a god, <laughs> and God is a DJ. Uh, so here's what happens: the the a lightning. Sound is a huge cacophony of frequencies, of, of sound energy, okay? High frequency, low frequency. But here's the problem. High frequency doesn't travel very far. It's easily disrupted. It's easily, uh, it can easily lose its energy relative to the energy that it started with. And if high frequency sound loses its energy, it becomes lower frequency sounds. So... The farther away you are from a lightning strike, the lower is the total cacophony of frequencies that reach you. Aha. Uh-huh. So, lightning on the horizon is. Right. Okay, and if you have a pet dog, they'll, they'll, they, they hear that and they notice that. And they, they might start trembling, and you don't even know why, because that frequency is below what you can hear. The dogs hear it. All right. As the storm gets closer and closer, the higher frequencies become more and more part of what you what you hear. And if you hear a lightning strike where that sounds like it's ripping the fabric of the space-time continuum, it meant it hits your house. <laughs> 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 All right. So so that's what's that's what's going on there. Sound moves through air at about 700 miles an hour, plus or minus, depends on the the density of the air, but I like easy math, so let's just declare that the sound is moving at 600 miles an hour. Okay, 600 miles an hour is the speed of sound in air. How far does sound go in a minute? Well, that's 600 divided by 60. That's how far? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you can set up the verbal math problem and not compute it? No, that's not a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, 120 miles. <laughs> <laughs> right. So if it's 600 miles an hour and you right. divide by 60 minutes, right. okay, then sound will move 10 miles an 10 hour. Miles uh, 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 10 miles in a minute. In a minute. Right. Okay. So if sound moves 10 miles in a minute, how many seconds does it take the sound to move one mile? Um, 10 seconds. Or six, six. Six seconds, right? Six seconds. So it moves a mile every six seconds so that after a minute, it moves, it moves 10 miles. Right. And after an hour, it moves 600 miles. Right. So, so basically, if you want to know how far away the rain is from you, time, get the time difference between when you see a lightning strike and when you hear it. So you see the flash, and then you count one thousand. Count the second. One, one Mississippi, two, two thousand three. So if it's five seconds, let's say that's almost six seconds. So the, the storm's about a mile away. A mile away. Yeah, about a mile away. And so, and the real number is seven hundred miles an hour. So it, it's you know you, you make a small adjustment, but you get the basic idea. Okay, sound moves a mile every six seconds. And so just f- for your habits, if and if you hear the thunder and it never gets closer than that, the rain is not headed towards you. Don't worry about it. Go home. Go back to sleep. <laughs> but nice. if, if, if that time delay keeps getting shorter and shorter and shorter. Watch out. Watch out. Yep. Yeah, yeah. About One to lose day, your house. Hit you. You're about to lose your house. Yeah. yeah you Dorothy, know. you're not in Kansas anymore. <laughs> there you go. Nice. So a couple of other acoustic things. So for example, um, a snowflake is very, very is, is highly variegated, right? It's got six sides. It's got a lot of texture. And if you have snow that's descending and it's just softly landing... Yes. on blankets of, on, the, on the surface, okay? Now you have sound. Generally, when you hear someone from a distance, you are relying on the fact that the sound is bouncing off the pavement, off the walls. We don't think often about this, but reflected sound is a big part of how we interact with our world around us. Mm-hmm. All right. If you have snow everywhere, the surface of the snow is not rigid. It's not highly reflective. In fact, it's highly absorbent. So, particularly for city people, know this. If all of a sudden the city gets quiet and you don't hear anything, 
Look out the window, chances are it's snowing. Nice. Because the sound of the cars and all the normal sounds that reach you by reflecting off of steel and glass and concrete and cement is no longer reflecting. It's all muffled. Yeah. And so so the song, the Christmas song, Silent Night, Holy Night, um, whatever other reasons you want to think of it as a silent night, if it has just snowed, guaranteed to be more silent than it otherwise would have ever been. Snow is nature soundproofing. Na nature sure. soundproofing. Now, when you're walking on snow, okay? As opposed to walking on sunshine. <laughs> okay. If it, so it's just snowed and you're walking on it, okay? And that will normally be a silent uh, exercise, okay? Because you're just pressing down snowflakes because they landed softly and now you're just sort of compressing them. Fine. If it's colder, I forgot the temperatures. If it's colder than like 25 degrees, 20, low 20s. If it's a, definitely if it's in the teens or lower. If you then step on the snow, okay, the snow says, I will not yield under your boot print. I'm going to hold my shape because it is cold enough that we are all solid and rigid. And what happens? Crunch. The snow crunches. Yes. Then you crunch on snow. So if you're filming a movie or if you're observing a scene and you hear people crunching on the snow, guaranteed the temperatures in the low 20s are in the teens. Or, or, or there's a guy in a booth with some cornflakes and he's just <laughs> matching the sound to the people <laughs> walking. He's I crunch. forgot the sound studios have all those sound <laughs> exactly. effects in them. Right. So, so that's why snow crunches at cold temperatures and does not crunch at warmer temperatures. By the way, at the warmer temperatures, your pressure is enough to melt the snow, okay, to bring it immediately below the freezing point. That's a whole other Star Talk explainers that we've done, what, what yes. ice will do under pressure. Under pressure. Yeah, so these are some interesting sort of sound things to look out for um, when this happens. Now, it has been rumored that aurora, that you can hear aurora. And, and I don't, I'm not convinced of that. Really? Yeah, yeah. Because it happens at, you know, it's, it happens 50,000 feet up, you know, 10 miles away and farther up in the atmosphere where the atmosphere is really thin. Right. It is electrical. So it could be that it's, it's creating other electrical phenomenon in your environment. But to say that you heard sound that comes from that high, I'm not convinced of that. I, I don't believe. But people say it. So it's worth yeah, investigating. They say it's, it sings. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's worth yeah. investigating. I think so. Yeah, yeah. And so let me think, any other sounds you've heard in weather that you wonder about? I mean, you know, aside from the fact that uh, my uncle used to like to make his own sounds and then blame <laughs> it on me <laughs> while we were walking in the cold, other than that. <laughs> now, I, and here's another one. Um, you know, the sound of hail hitting, right? Oh. These are basically, these are like marbles falling out of the sky. Right. I know what that sound is. That is the sound of a call to the insurance adjuster. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> so people think, you know, you know, when do you get hail most? You get it in the summertime, right? That's yes. weird. Ice falling out of the sky in the summertime. Well, it's a reminder that the sun is not heating the air. The air is transparent to sunlight. That's why you can see the sun from Earth's surface through the air. So except in Los Angeles. <laughs> except in Los Angeles yeah. and Beijing and Mexico City. Right. <laughs> right. So <laughs> uh, those are inversion layers. that So they're, they're climactically susceptible to trapping smog. Both those three areas. You notice they're all in basins. Uh, yep. All, all yeah. of them. Santiago, all the Chile as well. So here's what happens. The sun heats the ground. The ground heats the air. All right, but if you go high above the ground, it gets very, very cold very, very quickly, no matter the time of year. All right, but in the summertime, you have the most ground heating, and so you have the most unstable air columns. So the biggest, thickest, juiciest cumulonimbus clouds, which we all learned about in elementary school, the big puffy ones, you find those in the summertime. And you look at them and you think the cloud is just sitting there, but if you look for long enough, you will see that it is roiling. Yes. And in the roiling, there is very highly unstable air rising within it. The more unstable the air is, 
in the upwardly rising columns, the harder it is for whatever is hanging out in there to fall out of the cloud. Wow. Because it's kept buoyant by these upwardly moving air columns. Right. So, so you, so you first nucleate a little droplet of, of, of uh, ice. It wants to fall out and say, no, you're not. And it comes back out and it nucleates with more moisture. Because what is a, a cloud? It's a big pocket of moisture. Well, okay. Droplets. So, uh, droplets. Right. Water droplets. So it gathers more moisture. And uh-uh, no, you're not. And it keeps doing this. It keeps doing this. Until the frozen ball says... You ain't holding me this time. No! <laughs> and that's why all of hail is about the same size. Because they had to, it had to get to that size to overcome the highly unstable air columns that were supporting, uh, supporting it. And so, so, so the, the more turbulent is the air, the, the, the louder they will be when they hit the ground. And then there it is. Look and, at that. And we always reference the size of hail to some other object, which I find interesting. No one says, I saw- It was golf ball size hail. It was baseball sized <laughs> hail. I've never you know? seen anybody talk about um, hail sized golf balls. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's obvious why, but I don't know. But anyhow, so Chuck, that's a little bit of the, the sound of weather. I love it. So, so very cool. Oh, and one other thing, one last thing. You ever been driving a car and it's raining and it's raining, you know, the whole time you're driving yep. and then you come under an overpass mm -hmm. and then it's silent. Yes. Okay. Just silent. That's an interesting phenomenon because what your brain had done was create the sound of rain as the normal so that when you go under the underpass, it's the absence of rain that you take notice of. See, and that happens in my everyday life where the normal sound is a house full of annoying <laughs> running children <laughs> running around. And when you, when you step that, out the house, you say, what was that? Was <laughs> when you that step out into silence, you wonder, you look around. So silent out here. What's How wrong? did this what? happen? And, oh my God, did we move to the country? <laughs> so there's a word I've seen, and it hasn't caught on, but I think it should. It's the sound of the absence of rain under an overpass, okay? And it's called a down pause. Ooh, instead of a down pour, yes. a down pause. Down pause, there you oh, go. Oh, that's lovely. I'm gonna leave you with that. A little bit of what weather sounds like on Star Talk Explainer, the, the Explainer Zone. Thank you, Chuck. Ah, it's a pleasure. Always good to have you. Uh, we're out, Neil deGrasse Tyson. Keep looking up.